Hey everyone, it's Mike Hambright with Flipner.com. Welcome back for this episode of the Flipner.com Expert Interview Show, where we meet with experts from across the real estate investing industry. This is episode number 299. We're getting close to that uh, awesome 300 number. And my guest today is Brian Ellis. Uh, Brian has been on the show before, about a year ago, and uh, he's a great guy. He's got just great information he's going to share with us today. Brian's a real estate investor, a speaker. He does a number of things. He's the man behind the uh, hugely popular Brian Ellis real estate letter and the host of self-directed investor radio. So uh, as you know, we now have the show in two parts. In the first part today, we're going to talk about, Brian's going to talk to us a little bit about why the stock market is booming and people are still leaving. Like, why is that happening? And um, then in the second part of the show, the taking action segment of the show, Brian is going to share a powerful and previously unknown loophole that makes it possible for you to totally have your cake and eat it too with your self-directed IRA. So that's right. Prohibited transactions may be a thing of the past for you. Brian, how are you, my friend? I am doing better than I deserve today, man. How about you? Hey, that's you really can't say it any better than that. That's fantastic. <laughs> um, uh, great to have you on the show again. Thank and you. Thank you. Thanks for, uh, I'm going to thank you in advance for sharing the uh, information you're going to share with us today because I know it's always always good stuff. So for those that don't know you, maybe didn't, didn't see the last episode, which by the way, was episode number 240, if anybody wants to review back to it. Um, why don't you kind of introduce yourself and tell us a little bit more about who you are? Absolutely. Well, uh, Mike, uh, presently, I am the host of the Self-Directed Investor Radio Show. That's that's uh, my podcast where we, we, we focus on sharing information with affluent investors who are really interested in just uh, making their own investment decisions. They they don't necessarily trust Wall Street. They want to figure out a better way. And so we, we tend to guide those folks. And, and as part of that, we, we connect them with, uh, w with opportunities to invest their money and the education they need to make that happen. So really, awesome. my whole goal is one thing, just to, uh, to help my clients make great investments that are simple, safe, and strong. That's, that's what we're all about. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, what's interesting is uh, as a former corporate guy, you know, I've been a real estate investor for about eight years now, but – there's just so much uh, lack of knowledge out there as to how you can invest your money and how you can take more control. And when you kind of get into yeah. the real estate space and you start to l learn about some of the tools I know you're going to share with us today, it's kind of like it just opens up this whole other world of possibility, right? Yeah, it, it really is. I mean, here's the thing, Mike. Most uh, most people don't even realize that they can invest in real estate or anything other than stocks or bonds or mutual funds. Right. And right. That's not because of the law. That's because of marketing. It, it's in Wall Street's best interest for you to think that. And that's right. just not the truth. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, kind of speaking of Wall Street, I know we're going to kick off the show here talking about, um, you know, the, the obviously the stock market's been a roller coaster over the past yeah. few years. And it's kind of come roaring back here as of late. And who knows what's going to happen during the uh, kind of election cycle. It's all over the board here. But w what's going on there? Well, you know, it's, it's really interesting. Uh, I am not one to say that you can't make money from stocks. You absolutely can make money from stocks, but it's it's a it's a tough thing, it's a wild thing, and it's a crazy thing. And what we see right now, anecdotally, is that a lot of people with large portfolios are stepping away from the stock market in recent weeks. And I say that anecdotally. I recently had a uh, conversation, a, a lunch meeting with a uh, a colleague of mine who who runs a self directed IRA company. And he said that they've been getting, uh, they they've been opening new accounts left and right, the entire yeah. year, and he's surprised about that. And and if if you think about it, it makes sense because what happens is at the beginning of the year the stock market was where where it was, and then it fell off hard. I don't know if you remember back in January yeah. and February it was ugly for a while. I mean the, it was really really ugly, it dropped about ten percent, and um, that happened very quickly. Yeah. But in the last six weeks. It's basically all come back. In fact, it has all come back. And that doesn't happen frequently. Yeah. So what you would think, Mike, is that in the last six weeks, the market's been booming. So everybody's going to want to stay in. But that is not what we have observed happening. People are still getting out. Taking their money off the table to say, hey, I'm back to I'm back to kind of even or where I was. And I'm not going to. Not going to risk it anymore, and that—that's exactly the motivation, actually, Mike. It's—it's—it's yeah. it, it's, it's basically cut and run. I'm not. I'm not. I'm. I'm at zero again. Let's get out and do something else now. Yeah, yeah. You, you don't. You don't even know this about me, but uh, 
my undergrad was in finance and uh, with a specialty in investments. So I worked for a very large bank for a few years. My wife was an investment banker on Wall Street. So we were okay. very much trained to be, uh, you know, stock market type folks. Sure. And then when I got, you know, uh, I wasn't a portfolio manager, but uh, I worked with portfolio managers. And you started to kind of hear over and over again that they're – their goals, their metrics are always to try to beat the S&P 500. And you, right. know, you start to have this realization of like, why not just invest in the S&P 500? <laughs> and then over time, exactly. you realize that most of this is my, this is just my personal belief now over the, which is why I have very, very little in the stock market at all is uh, I just have no control. And you just start to feel like it's all just a bunch of financial engineering ultimately. Cause you, you, you used to say, Hey, you know, the Peter, the Peter Drucker thing, the Warren Buffett's for the Buffett's of the world, find the products that you like, you know, that you use, that you yep. understand that you believe in and invest in that. But that has very little to do ultimately with the financial performance of the company behind it. Right. That, that's absolutely right. You know, yeah. and, and that, that is why I think real estate doesn't fit very well in, in the whole wall street model because uh, wall street, generally speaking, it relies on the ability to create financial instruments that don't actually exist. Right. Um, a lot of derivatives. Even, even a stock doesn't exact, actually exist. The stock and the company it represents are two different things entirely. Right. But with real estate, they can't do that. I mean, there, there is a certain amount of real estate, and that's it. So it doesn't really fit well with the leverage or the creative finance that is necessary for the financial, uh, for, you know, for the investment bankers and such. Yeah, yeah. And I found in my, uh, in my experience – when, when I thought I was savvy and, you know, finding investments and stuff <laughs> like that, which is, is to, to, unfortunately has never really worked well for me, even though I was kind of in that industry, is that I spent all my time trying to decide up front what I wanted to buy without really any anticipation, anticipation of what I'm going to do with it. And as you know, yeah. like when you get out, that's, that's a critical thing to know. And unless you, people just want to kind of be more passive, like they, they want to invest, but in the stock market, you always have to be thinking about what's going on. Should I get out now? Should I move somewhere else? And I find that when people invest in real estate, for example, or other products that are real estate related, that you kind of know what your endpoint is. You kind of have that horizon. And maybe a lot of it is because it's very kind of cash flow centered, right? Absolutely. I mean, cash flow is real. Equity is not. Now, there's, that's not to suggest that there's not value in equity. There absolutely is. Right. And uh, thank God for it. We've done very well from it. But cash flow, you can count. And it, it's that's a beautiful thing. And, yeah. you know, uh, uh, the stock market is uh, – it, it's it's on a roller coaster. And one of the reasons that I think that so many fairly wealthy people are getting out other than just being able to cut and run while they have, uh, don't have any losses, Mike, is because there is now – as of the last 15, 20 years specifically, there is now another factor in that that makes it completely uncontrollable, and that is the Fed. The Federal Reserve is in the way that they change their policies on a on a week to week or month to month basis has a massive impact on on the way the stock market works. Right? How can you understand that? How can you predict that? And how is that related to the companies you're investing in? Right. The answer is it's not. Yeah. And, and so people who want to control their money are getting out of stocks and into real estate and other options. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think is happening? You, I know you have your ear to the ground a lot more in this space than I do with uh, kind of the baby boomer effect because. People are – so mentally, they uh, – baby boomers are becoming less uh, – they're willing to take less risk, right? So they're moving yep. into things that they maybe understand more mm -hmm. or that are, are, are deemed to be less risky. But at some point, a lot of that money is going to start coming out of the market for those same reasons. They're, they're using it. They're living on it. They're getting older. How is that going to impact us you know, over the, the next you know, 10 or 20 years, would you say? It's, it's not going to be a good impact on, on the stock market. Yeah. Um, the baby boomers who are, by and large, that's my client base. Uh, yeah. People in in that age range and in, in that demographic, uh, people are those those people are are wising up, uh, and it's kind of slow. It's starting slow, but the reality is that there is nothing. Uh, there's not a lot of fundamental strength to the stock market, and nobody understands it. Right. And it's been my observation that as a person gets older and, and they are more dependent on their current assets, not on growing assets, but the, on their current one, they, they tend to focus more on things that they actually understand. So I, I, I don't think that, that the stock market holds a lot of promise in terms of keeping that capital. And that, that is trillions of dollars of capital. Right, right. Yeah. So uh, why don't you kind of t tell us a little more about – where do you think – what do you think is going to happen in the stock market over the years to come? Do you, what, what do you – I mean I know you have a lot of 
you're like me, you've got an opinion on everything, right? So let's talk about <laughs> what, what do you think is going to happen kind of in this w- – let's not get too political here because that could turn into like a six-hour show. But uh, <laughs> this, with this kind of election cycle, what do you see going on from that standpoint? Well – it's kind of just more. You're trying. To, I know you're trying to figure out how do I not get too political here. Not, L- well, let me say you know, it this it's not way. even that. Uh, it's it, it's how to answer that question honestly without making myself look like the fool that I actually am. <laughs> uh, no, I'm I'm really great at making predictions about politics and the stock market, and I'm really bad at being right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but I guess let's say let's say it this way. Let me maybe kind of answer my own question. Would you say that? With so much, I mean, people are just frustrated with politics, generally speaking. So, would you say that, generally speaking, that probably fuels the fire to move to safer investments, and because it's so there's so much uncertainty? Oh well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I certainly would, and and we'll we'll keep it simple. We'll keep that discussion simple. Yeah, no, uh, I, I certainly do do think that's the case, and we're in a presidential election year. Who knows what's going to happen? It's going to be. It's going to be a wild ride for the next few uh, few months, at, at least yeah. in what we see in the media and such. I don't really expect that the presidential elections will have that much of an effect on the stock market between now and the elections. Yeah. Uh, once we start seeing what actual policy proposals are going to happen after uh, the election, that's that that's when there could be tremors. But you know what? Here's the beautiful reality, Mike. I don't care. I, I just don't care. Um, yeah. You know, it, it's not that I'm not affected. I am. It's not that my clients aren't affected. They are. But if you're just smart about what you do and build a, a hedge, some pad, some some margin for error into your investing, which you can do in real estate, you, you have to worry a lot less. And you can't do that in stocks. So right. I, it's an easy sell. It's an easy thing to convince people that they need to redeploy capital away from stocks and into wise real estate deals. Yeah. Yeah. So with your, you know, obviously with a lot of your efforts, a lot of efforts of people that are in the self-directed space, like they're, you know, there's a lot of kind of, I'd say at a high level, there's mostly lack of information out there. Yeah. And then there's a whole bunch of misinformation too about self-directing because like you said, um, the traditional investment vehicles don't want you to know that this exists. And quite frankly, uh, the typ- typical people that are selling mutual funds and things like that, they don't even know this exists. They don't know what the rules are because yeah, yeah. they've just you been taught them, to sell their products, right? Done. Yeah. Yeah. So would you say uh, there's uh, – kind of talk about the awakening a little bit, like the uh, – as people are becoming more knowledgeable here, what, what's what's kind of the trend there? Uh, this this is a growing field. Uh, yeah. CBS Market Watch uh, recently uh, described this. Uh, I'm going to have to come up with the term that they use, but it basically is stratospheric growth in the self-directed retirement account space. Yeah. And that makes all the sense in the world because right now only about 2% of IRA assets are in self-directed retirement accounts. Wow. Now, I suspect it will never be half. It will probably never be 25%. But it wouldn't surprise me if it got to 10 to 15%. That would mean that this industry grows by you know, a, a, a factor of 5 or 10. Right, right. And so it, there's a lot of growth coming. And frankly, it is really, really, really easy – to paint a picture to people who don't currently know that this is possible of why stocks are so scary because they already kind of know it inherently. Right. And that's the thing that they have to be convinced of is what they're doing right now just doesn't make any sense. And that's, that's it's pretty easy to make that case. Yeah, that is, that's part of the problem is uh, a lot of folks have money to invest. They don't want it to sit idle and they don't know what else to do. Right. Right. <laughs> that's, exactly. a big, that's a big problem. Well, and, and historically, that has been a problem with self-directed IRAs, too, because a lot of people would switch over to self-directed IRAs, and then they just let their money sit there because they had no idea what to do. Yeah. Well, with the advent of services like what we provide at SDI360.com, that's no longer really, no real, no longer really an issue because uh, real estate is becoming more of a retail investment than it has been in the past. In yep. the past, it's been all about the specialist, all about the guy who could go out there, find a deal, manage the contractors, find a tenant, and do the management. Yep. That's not how it is anymore, and that's really benefiting people who have self-directed IRAs. Yeah, and with the you know, there's been a, a massive push in the turnkey space. I, I told you yeah. that we just recently launched uh, PassiveRental.com, which is aimed at the same thing. I mean, for for a guy like me, that's uh, bought hundreds of houses. I've always been, I've been kind of classically trained to advertise, go find the deepest buys, buy directly from the seller hire contractors, manage the whole thing. And it's a whole bunch of friction to kind of get that done. Yeah. Um, but when you realize that, Hey, if I'm going to keep this as a, as a rental property, it's a long-term asset for me. I'm not worried about 
what can I buy it for to, today and sell it in a month from now? You're more looking at the long term and you're comparing it to what's in the stock market. It makes a whole lot of sense to go pay to pay more for that because you don't have to find the deal. You don't have to have staff to deal with to rehab it. You don't have to deal with contractors and appraisers and all yeah. this other stuff. You could basically, you know, effectively pay a lot more in some markets that are historically, you know, really good cash flow markets. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, you know, uh, we we have a slightly different view on that at, at uh, SDI 360. Uh, I think the whole turnkey thing is a very, very good thing. Um, Having said that, you know the the model right now is that that investors who who buy through the, those kinds of channels, generally speaking, they pay full retail, yeah. and um, that might work cash flow wise. But where it doesn't work is if the market goes against you in any time in the near term. Hmm. Now, if you're holding for twenty years, you shouldn't care about that, right? You shouldn't yeah. care about that. But the reality is, it's still kind of heavy on the back of your mind if you're if you care about your money. So one of the other things that we do a little bit differently is that we on, we only uh, work with uh, 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 folks who can provide turnkey properties below their actual uh, current market price. Sure. I think that's actually really important. That makes it harder to find turnkey deals. Yeah. Uh, but if you can buy 10 or 15% below market value and still get it as a turnkey deal, well, then you're really getting the best of all worlds. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Thanks for joining us up to this point in the show. The second half of our show is restricted to only FlipNerd Pro and Elite members and only accessible on FlipNerd.com. If you're not a Pro or Elite member yet, you can upgrade your account in about one minute by visiting FlipNerd.com slash upgrade. Depending on membership level, you'll get access to off-market properties real-time, including real-time email and text alerts for new properties listed in your market. You'll get access to hundreds of full-length expert interviews, and Elite members get access to the Flip Nerd Lab, which includes detailed masterclass trainings, two live webinars a month where you can interact with leaders in the industry, and access to our Elite Mastermind group, where you can interact with hundreds of the top real estate investors in America, build relationships with those that are actually operating successful real estate investing businesses. By visiting flipnerd.com slash upgrade, you'll learn much more about our membership options. And once you've upgraded your membership, come on back and listen to the rest of this show.